Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, The Crafter. And today I've got a little bit of a play, to be honest with you. Okay, I belong to the group of makers of mixed media art and artists on Facebook. Um, you've heard me talk about them before. There will be a link in the description box below. And one of the things they do is every month they have an overall theme um, for that month that you can use in your other challenges, your combos, or just basically use as a focus to create something. And I try and do something each month, time allowing. And this month I was thinking, I wasn't quite sure what I could do. So anyway, the theme for this month is um, over the rainbow, um, which in whichever way you want to say it, it's it's over the rainbow. So I thought, well, for me, that obviously means I'm going to use rainbow colours. So I'm going to use red, orange, yellow. I've got two shades of green and you'll see why later on. I'm blue. I've got two um, indigo. I've only got Prussian blue, so I'm calling Prussian blue indigo. And then I've got purple. Oh, well, I've got violet purple here. I've also pulled in white because if I want to adjust the, the colour of anything or the shade or the hue. Or, no, it's shade, isn't it? Whether I want to use the shade or the tint of that colour, then I will add white or I could even add black if I want to make it darker. Anyway, I'm, I'm digressing. So I've been struggling to think what I was going to do. So day before yesterday, I was in a shop in, in my local town here in Cardiff, and it's called The Works, and I saw a whole bookshelf full of colouring books. And they were, they were reduced, so I thought, you know, that's fine. I've, I've never got into the colouring book thing. I have tried. But I got really bored really, really e early and I went, mm, and then I'd rush to finish and go, OK, well, what do I do with this? So I kind of avoid the colouring book art, but I thought, you know what, I've, I've looked at this for some reason. So I had a look and I found this one that says Wonderful World of Flowers. Um, I don't know whether it's available on the Internet if anyone is truly interested. That's that's the ISBN number. Um uh, that's sort of all the details on it. Anyway, I, I don't even know whether I can give you a link. That that's just that's just what it was. But this will work. So I thought, okay, what I might do is I might try to use this to do the over the rainbow thing. But also I might use it to generate um, a doodling project. So I pulled the book off the shelf and had a flick through, and there's there's lots of stuff in here that. I must admit, I was like, yeah, it doesn't, it's not really sparking my interest. But I had I had the inkling of an idea. So I, I went through this to have a look and think, uh, is there anything in here that will work for me? Now, I'm sure what I'm going to do is not an original idea. Like That was one that appealed to me. Although I think it might take too long to do that one. And there was another one in here I liked the look of, and I think it's the one we're going to do, which is this one, which is a bit more simplistic. Um, but as you can see, there's lots of stuff in this. Not sure what I'll do with this afterwards, where the other pages, maybe I'll cut the flowers out and use them for something, or I don't know. So this is the page I'm going to use. Let's pop that over there. And then just get a knife. I've got a knife. i get a knife. Just zip this down here so I can remove this page. Right. Okay, so this is the image I thought I would work with. As I said, I'm going to do something I think is slightly different. And to do it, I'm kind of just going to take it down a little bit and you'll see why in a minute. Right, um, I've got my acrylic sheet that I put my 12 by 12 on. Um, and I'm just going to, now do I want it down the side or, why not just put it smack in the middle? Right, I'm going to tape this down to my sheet, using just a bit of washi. I'm doing this so that nothing moves around on me, or hopefully lifts off at least. Um, let's tape that little bit down and that little bit down, because I might want to preserve this afterwards if it works really well. I'm going to bring in my 12 by 12 gel press. 
gel plate, whichever you want to call it. I'm going to relatively centralize it up. Okay. Now, obviously, I can see this. Now, what I'm thinking of doing is I'm thinking of using the rainbow colors to actually paint this design onto my gel plate. Then once it's completely dry, I will probably put some other sort of paint and textures into the background as well. Leave it dry, put another coat of paint and pull the entire thing onto a sheet of um, paper. Actually, I'm going to use 250 GSM cardstock, which is what I normally use for this. Then when it's fully dried, I'm going to come in and doodle it. Um, just an idea. Now, on this, I also pulled in my 5x7 purely because I'm just going to put my paints on here to use them. Now, the challenge for me is going to think in reverse. Whatever I put down first will be the first thing on the plate. And then something next will be over the top of it. However, when I pull it over, it will be reversed. So I have to think a little bit, a little bit in a weird way. So I've got a couple of paint brushes. Um, I've got some clean up water. I need a spray of water, actually, just because I don't want the paint to do, be too thick and loopy. So this could or could not work. Do not know. So for me, obviously, I need to start with the centers of the flowers. And I'm going to keep it relatively simple, or I would if I get this paint open. And I'm going to stay with reasonably generic colours, should we say. So I'm just going to use yellow for the centres of the flowers. Now, I don't want to get, get the paint too liquid, or it's going to actually separate out on the plate. So I need a bit of towel, don't I? Just a bit of kitchen towel to keep my brush relatively clean. Now... I am assuming this is going to end up looking quite, I won't say the word naive, but I don't mean completely naive. What I mean is it's, it's going to be looking a bit folksy. It's sort of a bit, it's not going to have a polished finish. And also the other trouble for me is you are looking directly down on this because the camera is above it. I'm looking at an angle. So everything I do is potentially going to be at an angle. So I'm probably going to not look as if I'm centralizing completely on the areas I'm supposed to be working on, because obviously if I tip this, you can see that it looks different to you. So I'm going to try and be as quick as I can with this without rushing it too much. I'm actually going to just dab a few more bits of yellow on top of here just because this yellow isn't giving me the opaque look that I thought it would that's fine right clean the brush off a bit now is there anything else I want to put on here that's yellow now I've got to be careful that the things in the foreground are the things that need to be yellow I could potentially do that yellow couldn't I so if I come in and do that I think when I turn this over and pick it up, sorry, when I pick it up and I turn it over, I think it's going to look quite rough. That's actually not a problem for me. I'm, I'm OK with that. Um, but therein lies the secret to doing the doodling. The doodling will actually help me define and fill in. Let's clean off the brush right now. Obviously, next in line are these sort of petals, and I need to think what colour I want to do on those. Um, let's go for a little bit of orange. Now, I'm using craft paints. I could have been using heavier body paints, but the craft paints are just the ones that I had in the colours I needed. So... I'm not going to add water. The system's quite fluid and also my brush is now wet. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to paint these bits. Now, as I said, I, I would be shocked if no one has done this before. So, so I'm not laying claim to this in any way, shape or form. It, it's, it's got to have been done by somebody somewhere.
Now, if this starts to take quite a bit of time to do, I may well, once you've seen the technique, um, pause the video and continue and paint it and then turn the video back on for the next pieces. So I need to turn this because I will break my wrist trying to, trying to paint this. Oh, it's going to be awkward, isn't it? Look, I have to leave it there so I can see the orientation things are in. I can see my perfectionism isn't going to like this. But we're letting go of perfect, aren't we? Right, what else needs to be painted? What else can be orange on here? There's a line around here I think I could pull in as orange. Yeah, what I consider as very opaque paints don't seem to be looking very opaque on this plate. But I'm probably going to pull this with a light colour here. And I think in pulling it with a light colour, it's going to make sure that everything on here has a bit more of an intensity. I'm going to leave this bit in here orange as well. I'm trying to give everything sort of a second coat just to, because as it's drying, I can get another coat on it. It will amp up the intensity. Now, I'm not sure you could do this with inks, actually. I'm trying to think that through. I'm not very successful with inks because I don't use inks very often. And of course, I can't turn this over and look at the other side because the image is blocking the image. Go figure on that one. So right, let's turn this this way. Sorry, I hope all this moving isn't making anyone ill, but I've kind of got to do it to keep my perspective of the shapes in the right orientation. Let's give this a little bit more of a So hopefully you're all having a good day. We're having a remarkably sunny day here in Wales. I was shocked. I woke up this morning, looked out the curtains and went, oh, wow. It was very different to what we've been receiving over the last few days, I must admit. I've got a little bit of yellow here. I'm just going to see whether I can tickle up a little bit more. These centres, I'd like them to be quite intense. Especially this one here that seems to be just faded into the background a bit. Right. So what colour do we want things? Right, so let's pull colours out I've already used so I don't keep going back to them all the time. Now I can always use white. I must remember that I can always use white. Um... This here looks like it's meant to be a gerbera. Gerberas being a South African daisy, they're, they're the big ones. You may have seen them in shops. I mean, we, we get them a lot here in the UK in bouquets of flowers. But they are, I want to say they're an African native. The flowers, not, <laughs> not the shop. Okay, right. So I'm just going to come in and paint in this. Now, once I've painted all of the flowers in, of course, I can then come in and paint the leaves behind them. And then, as you know, once I've done the flowers, I probably need to paint these spirals. Oh, I have to think about that, aren't I? Because some of them are the right way up and some of them are not. So what we need to do now is you you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to paint this gerbera. And then I think we may just stop the video while I get on and maybe just get the flowers painted because I want to try and make sure 
I'm clear about which order things are being painted in. Right. Also, I'm trying not to put my hand in whatever I've already painted. I suppose if you were someone who could do um, birds or peacocks or why did I say peacocks? I have no idea. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm at butterflies, um, birds, butterflies, whatever you could find. Actually, this this process would work if you have the image underneath it. Obviously, it's down to your painting skills and your ability to follow the design, which I am struggling a little bit because of the depth of the gel press because that's I want to say about about a centimetre and it's it's like looking at something under under the surface of the water it's all distorted and twisted away from me right I think I'm going to pause I'm going to finish the flowers only and then I'll come back to you guys, OK? So bear with me because it'll be easier if I have not got this under the camera to actually paint it. But you can see what I'm doing. OK, back in two. So here I am back. The flowers are done. I must admit, guys, that was incredibly hard. Uh, trying to deal with the perspective between the image and the plate because there's a gap between. It's, it's just, as I said, it's like looking into a river and the surface of the river distorts what's below. Um, also, because of the surface here, um, I found that the only way I could get a solid-ish coating was to give two or three coats of the paint, leaving it dry between each, each stage. So, and the thing is, I've tried to be quite particular, but I know when I turn this over, once we pull it, it's just going to be blobs and the detail is going to be what I do with the pen. So I know that when I turn this over, it's not going to look like I put all that effort in, but I have. Right, now I need to start on the leaves. Now, I need to work out which ones I need to do first. Right, I need to do the light green leaves first and then the dark. Sorry, that doesn't make any sense to you, does it? I'm doing these as the light green and those as the dark green because they're sort of hidden between. Now, I have these curly cues going on around here and I'm in half a mind to actually leave those and not paint them. I would be better doing those with a pen when I come to doodle. Right, this is just a mix-up bottle of different greens. I'm hoping it's going to be... Um, can you see that? You can now. I'm hoping it's going to be opaque enough to go on with not too many coats, because I'm finding that um, the craft paints are easier to paint on, but I have to give two or three coats, whereas the more heavy-bodied paints usually two coats and I've got it done so we're going to go over the light ones and we're going to work on the bigger leaves now which are what I regard as next in the in the order of things to do okay this paint looks like it's going on really quite nicely and obviously the trouble is you're probably looking at this going you're not inside the lines Kerry actually if you were looking at it from the angle I'm looking at it I would be in the lines. So hopefully my head doesn't get in the way here. Something I have found quite useful is if I have a small paintbrush that's slightly damp, I can always come in and tidy up any lines. So that's, that's also been something helpful I, to do, I learned. So... The other thing I try to do is I'm trying to keep my brush strokes in line with the veining so I know that these have veins that come into the middle. So I'm trying to sort of do that. The first time you put a layer of paint on, it's not the greatest. But then when you come in a second time, the first layer has actually dried and you have a better chance. Not sure I'm going to get a really good 
representation of any sort of veining on that. I think I'm just going to leave it as is. Right, I'll do one more. Let's do this one over here because it's close. To me. Can you see? You can see. And then again, I will turn the camera off and get on and paint all of these because you don't need to sit around watching hours of someone painting when it's not really that interesting, really, is it? Um, I'm also quite aware that when I paint, I'm going up to the line of the other paint that I've got, say, the, over the purple. However, I'm trying not to overlap it too much because it may affect um, how it looks from behind. So, and I'm, as I've not done this before, I, I don't know whether it will look different or not. So the leaves didn't take as long as I thought they would take. It's all done and it's all dry now. What I didn't realise was this is almost a transparent and this was almost an opaque. So I did do the smaller leaves in this colour. I gave them two coats and then I backed them with this colour because then at least they will be a different colour to these. And I thought it might give an interesting effect. So it's all on there. I have no idea what it's going to look like from the other side. I should imagine it's just going to look like blobs of colour, as I said, until I go in with a Posca pen and bring all of that detail yeah. back in. I'm doing a play on, I mean, this the whole thing is called Over the Rainbow. So I'm going to play on the Wizard of Oz theme. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this stencil, which is a stencil by Rhonda Donar. And I'm going to put bricks into it as if it's yellow brick road. Now, the trouble is, this is a brand new stencil. Brand new stencils like to stick to paint and pull it off. So we're going to fingers cross here. And hope that doesn't happen and I'm going to try to lay the stencil on in such a way that it doesn't really touch much of the painting if I can help it let's put it that way right also I want the yellow brick road to be quite bright but I don't need it that bright so I'm going to add a little bit of white to it at the same time so I still haven't quite got to grips with what colour I'm going to be pulling this with. I'm, I'm airing towards a metallic, but I don't know. I don't know whether that's right. That's a huge amount of paint on there, Griffiths. I'll be putting some of this in the clean off thing in a minute. That's way, way, way too much paint. I need something to roll that off on. What can I roll it off on? Right, just a bit of, bit of paper. That's way too much. I can't be doing with that much. And then be able to do it. Right, so I'm going to come in. Now, luckily enough, because it's bricks, I can kind of line it up. So if I come in and I redo the bricks, let's go over there. I can come in a bit. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect bricks. It just needs to be bits of bricks. And I think I'm going to turn this so that I can work other way up. I'm just so scared of lifting this up. After all of this work, I'd be very, very annoyed if that happens, just because of my own stupidity. I think just put a little bit up here. Am I anywhere near in shot? Probably not. Right, and if I get a little bit across the top here. Oh, that matched up quite well. And I think I want to try and do a little bit across here as well. Now, obviously, this is going to have to dry. There's, there's no way that I can, I can do anything after this unless this is dry. Well, I think that's going to be as much as I do there. Um, that's kind of bothering me that there's nothing in there. Let's just be a little brave, Griffiths. Just a hint. Whew. Right. Um, this needs to go to one side because it needs to be cleaned. This needs to be dried. That needs to be used up on something. 
So while this has been drying, I've been contemplating and I was torn between should I go for deep gold or should I go for copper? And I still can't tell you which I've decided because I don't know. I think I might do a combination of both. I think if I put the deep gold here, the reason I don't put copper behind this is I don't know how much is, it's going to darken the flowers because I just don't know. Um, and if I do just the gold, it's almost the same colour as the bricks. So I'm literally going to do both. Um, I wonder, I can put the gold directly onto the flowers, I think. Because I know there's, oh, that's a hell of a lot of paint, Griffiths. And then if I have a bit of the other one over here. All right. That's a heck of a lot of paint. I don't need that much paint, but I'll brew it off in a minute. So I'm trying to skim over the top so that I don't overbrayer things and pull stuff off. And I reckon if I have a good coating of gold on here, and copper, then what I can do is brayer off the excess before I lie down the, the paper. Now I'm using 12 by 12, 250 GSM cardstock for this. I don't need so much that it's soupy on the back, but I do need enough that it grips all of the painted section. Now, this may not work. I don't know, because I don't know. Right, so I'm going to pop this down. I'd like to pop it down reasonably central. There you go. Give it a bit of a burnish. I've got a bit of tissue. This bit of tissue will do. It's just so I don't rub my fingers in all of the paint. And I want to make sure I get this all burnished down and in full, full contact. Now, I'm going to have to start filming after this and leave this until tomorrow. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's about 9.30ish in the morning here. Um, this has been drying for overnight, obviously. And fingers crossed I can get this off. There was a lot of paint on here. I hope to goodness it comes off. If not, I might have a few a few things that I can do to save it, but I'd rather it comes off properly in the first place. Right, I'm running my thumb around the edges just because if there's a build-up of paint on the edges, I'd like it to crack so it doesn't tear the paper. Let's see if I can... I like to sort of go along the edge first. to see. I really do hope this has worked. Um, would I do this again? I'm not sure I would actually. I, I must admit I did find um, it difficult to with the depth perception so so I get this off without tearing it. Oh it's coming off. Whoa. Ah, it's off. Why has that got that funny shape there? Maybe that was a funny shape on here. How was it? Oh, I think it was because there was a curly cue around it. See, this is going to be my problem now. I'm going to have to work backwards, aren't I? But that's fine. Okay, we proved I can do it and get it off there. And as I said, there was a lot of paint. So I'm just going to roll this in both directions just to flatten it out a bit. Right, that can sit and think about itself. I like how this turned out. I need to trim the edges off this too, only a little bit, just to just to get rid of that white there and the white along. Sorry, you can't see it, can you? And the white along the bottom. It's it's my gel plate. Over years, over the years of owning this gel plate, it's slightly distorted, but that's fine. We'll go with it. Right, let's put that to one side. Now. I need to lift this off here, so I'm talking out loud because I'm trying to work out what I need to be doing next. That's the gel plate safely out of the way. Right, these little bits of washi can be 
added to my bookcase collection and by that I mean any bits of washi that I can reuse I stick to the edge of my bookcase which is just by there and then if I'm looking to grab a piece of washi that's the first place I check until it's lost it's sticky entirely or it's got covered in paint or ink and I can no longer use it right. I'm wondering actually whether I should stick my image back to this acrylic plate because that will enable me to turn it round and things like that. So I do think if I if I stick this down to something with those little bits of washi, I can then lift it up, and move it around, and it'll stay flat for you guys viewing it, and it'll stay flat for me me, me to view it too. So now I'm going to have to work out roughly. Oh, actually, that flower's a good reference point. So it's it's backwards, right? This is there because remember I didn't draw in the curly cues. Also, you may notice I didn't do that thin line around the outside of there. It was just too difficult to paint. So what I'm going to do is when I draw in the detail, I will actually draw in the double line back around it. So I think it's marker time, really, don't you? Right, I think we should start with, let's see what size is this, right? This is a Posca uh, PC3M. Let's get the centres back into these things, shall we? Now, I'm not sure we're going to do the whole of the video of me doing this. But I'm definitely going to do as much as I can. If when I'm editing it, this feels like it's getting boring, I may very well um, edit sections out. Right. So this was this one here. I don't want to show you where it is. It's going to be tricky to do both in the same. So that's that there. So that's just. Now we know I'm not going to get it absolutely identical. And you know what? I'm okay with that. It's not my aim to get it absolutely identical. And I'm probably drawing it backwards to what I should be drawing it as well. So I'm okay with that. Right. What was this one? Right, this one was little radiating circles. Okay, so now I've got the centres in, that sort of gives me a heads up of where to work. Now, I don't know whether I want to do the entire thing with black, but I may do quite a, quite a lot of it. See if I've got a, a thinner black. Oh, and once again, thank you to those who sent me um, thanks, um, a super thanks by the button below. You enabled me to buy these um, Posca pens, which has made me very happy. I've got a really thin one. And thank you once again to all of you, because without you, I wouldn't be able to do this. Right, I think I'm going to attempt to do this one first. See this loopy, loopy line thing? I have got the right one of not. Yes, it is that one. So I'm wondering whether I should try it with this size. Let's put the cap on that so it doesn't dry out. Okay, so it's... Right, hold your breath, guys. Ooh, talk about breeze. Right, and then there's these little radial things coming off off this central piece and they're different lengths and I'm not trying to match the image perfectly I'm just trying to get the flavor of it should we say and at the end of each one of them there's a little tiny circle thing Far as being, am I in shot? 
almost. If I was being all botanical, I would say they're the stamens of this flower, which is what I think they're supposed to be, to be honest. And I do bear the right to embellish this further once, once I've got the basics done. Right, where are we up to? I think that's okay. I think that worked out all right. I'm not going to outline the edges because I seem to feel that's where these curly cue come, come things come in. And it could very well be that I might just ad lib some of those. Right, let's look at this bigger flower. So I need to put the little pieces in between and that puts that there. Now, part of me wants to go around this in red before I go around it in black, because as you can see, I can still see the purple through there, which is why I was trying not to overlay the colours. So is my red working? I'm not sure I haven't got a wider one. I haven't got a wider one. Right, so I think I'm just going to outline in red. That improved that, didn't it? Right, now I need to come in and put the black in. I'm wondering whether I want to do it with the thicker lines or the thinner lines. I think if I use the thinner lines for the detail, the thinner pen for the detail, and this was a PC1MR, if I use the thinner lines for the inner details and the thicker line for the overall outline, I think that will work for me. So bear with me, I'm trying to do this and not get my head in the camera at the same time, which is proving to be a little bit tricky. I am really pleased I didn't choose the more complex design because as, as you saw at the beginning of the video, there was a second one I was actually thinking of doing. And I'm glad I didn't because it would have driven me to distraction. Right, on the original flower, there is a line around it, and I want to put that line into this, which is another reason I did the red. I wonder whether I want to do another line of red around that. I might actually. Sorry, this is going to be very much me talking to myself. There it is. Right, what was the next bit on here? Right, so each of these has a spike coming out from it. Actually, I wonder whether I should do the bigger petals first and then put the spike into the middle of them because I think that will dictate where things go. Are you still in shot? You are. Right, let's see if I can get this. Right, why aren't you working? You're a brand new pen. Maybe I didn't prime it. We'll miss that bit there. Never mind. The aim is not perfection. I have to keep reminding myself of that. Right. If I remember right, that bit goes in between things. This one goes over things. I'm glad I put the bricks on here. I'm also glad I chose to do metallics because as you can see, that adds a really nice extra element. Oh, 
Okay, that flower's coming to life. Let's just see if I can do bits of it right. So I'm going to try and do these leaves here, and I know they're in reverse of what's on the plate in front of me. Is that crossover? That crosses over. Right, and they've got a line flicked up the middle of them. Well, I think that will define those lovely. Let's do this one. I've got it here. It's this one here, right? So the bottom leaf is pretty much the dominant one. And again, and as I'm working on this side, let's work on these leaves, right. Um, where am I up to? Right, so it's these two I'm trying to do. So it's this leaf that goes over that leaf. Not that anyone's checking. But I'd like to get it as correctly as I can. Right, slightly curving line, just to give some movement to the leaf. And then as the outer veins, they curve in as they go down and they're not equal to each other. So, Right, so you've got the idea. I think it's going to be okay. Right, I think I'm going to turn the camera off for a few seconds for you. For me, it's going to be longer, obviously, and I'm going to do all of this, but I won't do the curly cues. I will come back to you to do the curly cues because that in itself is going to be a challenge, I can assure you. But I'm going to try and get the whole rest of this done, which shouldn't be too difficult. So, I've got this much done so far. Um, it's, it's okay. I'm still not... I mean, it's not really a doodle at the moment because I've just basically taken this, coloured it and drawn around the shapes. Although I have altered and deviated slightly. I did find by holding this up against my window, as you can see, obviously the light shone through it, so I actually had a better idea of where things go. Now, I didn't do the curly swirly bits that are on here yet, purely because I just needed to think about them. So I'm going to use brown. May not be, I'm probably going to outline them in black as well. So I'm going to hold this on and you just about see it. So I need to work out. Right, let's be brave, Griffiths. Okay, that's the basic shape. Give it a thicker to thinner appearance. Hopefully. I shall wonder whether I do them in different colours. 
Okay, so that's the first one anyway. I have a feeling one comes off this. Right, one comes off around here. I'll go around them in black afterwards, I think. Let the paint dry a bit. Um, this one piece here, um, it was the same colour as the Prussian there, but it was so dark I couldn't even get a detail. So I went over it with a blue Posca pen just called blue and um, also around the outside of this flower here I went round with um, violet just to give it an extra pop of something and I might go around that one as well in the middle with the same color because I like that effect and it would cover up some of my messy painting that I did around there right so let's get back to this again so I've got those two there I've done that one Right, apparently there's another one that comes in here. The trick is working out what goes under and what goes over. And I think I'm pretty much going to keep them all as going under other things. So yes, as I said, I'm quite conscious this doesn't, as far as I'm concerned, qualify as a doodle at the moment. So once I've, once I've got the foundation sorted out, then, then I can possibly come in and doodle. Right, so this one and this one are done. That one's done. Right, so that explains that, does it? Right, so this curved edge here is the end of one that comes somehow around here was I even in shot for that I was in shot for that right thank goodness for that right, so that's that one brought me up to Right, there's another one that goes across there. Okay, I'm going to have to adjust that one because I, I went too far over with this one. So let's just give... So I'm just going to make one up at the moment, guys, because... Because that's what it's going to take. Right. So that's that. Right, there's an offspring of that one, which I wondered why I had all these funky curved edges. Right. Now I seem, looking at this, it looks like there's pieces that fit into here. And I think I may use those as areas to doodle. Actually, I think I've done it. I think, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right, I have done it. Okay, so put the lid on this, where I put the lid. So before I go in and deal with that, let's deal with something else, right? So I'm back to, what's the thicker one? I don't think I want the thicker one. I might change my mind whether I want the thicker one. No. Right, so there were, right, we're going to get a bit ad-lib on this now. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a shape that's on the inside of each of these curves, which is where I can come in and do a little bit of doodling. I'll outline the brown bits when you're not here. So, because you don't need to see me doing that. Oh, the sun's coming out. It's unusual. Well, the sun really is coming out, isn't it? Well, this is going to be a bit of a funky shape here. Oh, blinded by the sun. Let's 
Let's move this so I can draw one roughly smooth line. Right, and then there's this funky little piece in here, which I'm just going to make up. Right, there are no other enclosed, oh, there is just more enclosed areas here. Right, I'm only doing the enclosed areas. I reckon if I bring that to a point and touch there, I can, I can do that one as well. Now I'm thinking because that's there, I need something up here. So let's just ad lib, guys. Let's let's have a let's have a play, right. It's quite heavy here, so I want something up here. Like something in here. Right, so that gives me opportunities. I feel I just want to curve that around there somehow. Just to balance out the shape. Okay, I feel better about that. Now let's come in and put these funky lines in here, or the spaces. Okay, so that gives me some other areas. I'm, I'm liking that. That seems balanced. It does seem a bit up in that corner now, so... Let's just leave it with it. Stop playing with that. Right, let me just get the purple out. I just want to see what a purple line would look like around there, and I think I'm just going to do one of the petals just to see how I feel about it. I should do two of the petals. Yeah, and I think once I've gone round that, right, oh, the sun is shining now, typical. Let's see if I put it over here for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the camera, do the purple around there, and then I'm going to outline each of these black spirals. Um, well, back again, I did the purple around here, and I'm really pleased I did because that really made that pop. Um, I outlined the brown. Oh, I missed a bit. Excuse me while I have an, a moment. Where's the black gone? There you go. Um, yeah, I went around the brown as well. I've now got areas I can work within. I wonder whether I want to do that as an area as well. Maybe. Isn't it funny? I thought I'd, I'd done everything. Um, and then the moment the camera's on, I spot something I should have done. Right, there you go. So I think for me... I need to start adding some white to this. Now, I do know this piece down here had this sort of um, spiderweb thing on it, and I wasn't able to do it because it was too dark. So I think I'm going to use a white now, and this is a white PC1MR. I get a bit confused by all of... Actually, that's black, you fool. No, I meant white. PC one MR. You can see it's been a long morning already. So I'm just going to hopefully 
kept my head out of the shot. And I'm hoping that by adding white, it'll brighten all of this up a bit. And give me a bit more oomph to it, should we say. I'm not going to do it so that all of the little joins are matching up because I know I will never get that done if I try and do that. So there you go. That, that lightened that up in, in a heartbeat. So, um, what's the other thing I want to do? I want to I want to do more white in here as actually that was the other thing I wanted to do. I think I want to come in and where these areas are here, I think I just want to add extra lines of white into there. I reckon I should be able to get at least two into each one of them. But nobody's counting, so if I don't get two, I don't get two. Right, I like that. That was that was a good move, putting that in there. I'm very tempted to do the same here with another colour, like black, but I'm going to let that be for a moment. Right, I did want to come in. Where's my big black? The big black, this is a 5M. And what I want to do is I want to put dots on the curves of some of these, as if they're almost like seed pods. I'm just going to do five dots on each, not that I need an exact number on each, but I'm not going to put it on that one because it's got something on it, but I'm put something here. Can't do that one, but I can do this one. Um, that's going over that one and I can't put anything in that one. Okay, that adds a little bit more interest in that. Now, what else did I want to do? I like the leaves this colour, but I think I want to put a bit of a, a line of something around the side. I'm not going to put my hand in anything. I'm just going to kitchen towel. It's a horrible feeling I'm going to put my hand in something. Right, I just want to put a line on each leaf. Just to give it a bit of, I don't know, just a bit of something. Okay, I'm okay with that. Now, this gerbera down here has bothered me. It just doesn't look right. And I'm wondering whether... Should I stay with the white? See if I can do a line on the inside of each petal. Yeah, that will lighten it up a lot. That's like I feel feel I want to put a dot around there too. But I'll let that dry first. Right. Um, what else I want to right? We need to address these areas. 
I think I want to stay with black on those. Just, just because I think I'll just stay with black on them. So because that's like a spider's web, I think I'm just going to make this a lattice. And I've done that there. Let's put it somewhere else as well. Let's see if I can do this whole section quite quickly. So I've definitely met the brief, my personal brief, of using every colour of the rainbow because I know every colour of the rainbow is in here. I want to add another bit of that. I like that. Sorry, spinning this round is probably not making you feel very well, is it? That's not my intent. I'm doing this because it's quite a quick way to fill in a gap. And I know you don't mind a longer video. And I don't mind doing a longer video. The only trouble with doing a longer video is the upload time is actually longer as well. And also, got to remember that, say this video was an hour and a half long, it would probably take me probably two hours to edit it. And it would take, well, I should imagine, at least an hour for it to upload. So that's that's. That's almost an entire day of working on a video, and that's without all of the prep time ahead. So it's not so much that you guys don't mind, and thank you for the knowing that you don't. However, I would just like to do something that's not so heavy, heavy labour on me. I think I want to do it on this one as well. And that's why a lot of the time you will find in my videos, I cut out things like cleaning and tidying up times because you don't need to see it. It's just pointless for you. Right, there you go. That's given those a little bit of interest, isn't it? Right, I am feeling... Oh, I said I was going to do something about that, didn't I? Right, um... I wonder how orange is the orange? Orange is orange, Griffiths. Um, may have been the wrong idea, but you know what? I'm going with it. I don't mind that, that's okay. Um, this around here looks really dirty. I'm wondering whether I can just come in. Well, I've got no choice. It's this size marker or not. So if I can just, I'm trying not to put my hand in something, I've already put it in. That's a better idea. Oh, and here comes that sun again. I woke up this morning and went, oh great, it's not a sunny morning. I'll be able to get this video up quite early and would you go and tell me what happens the sun comes out halfway through filming right i will outline that afterwards okay um oh i was going to make those those dots were going to be white for me I like putting dots on things. Right, where else am I up to? I have these spots. Now, I don't know whether to colour them. I don't think I'm going to get a good colour if I do them coloured in. Let's do some circles. What colour circles should we do? What colour fine liners have I got? I've got, I've got a thin red, a thin blue, a thin purple, a thin white, a thin black. Oh, what colour is this? That's very vibrant. Oh, that's almost Kelly green. What colour green is that? Oh, very helpful. It's just green. 
and that's English green which is a lot darker right I've got quite a bit of purple on here so let's eliminate purple we've done quite a bit of black and white one two three four five six seven eight how convenient let's do half the half the designs with this color and I think I'm literally going to draw little circles that almost connect with each other and I'm going to do it in the smaller areas and then do something a little bit larger in the other areas See this one was that. Circles are still something I struggle drawing, but you know what? I'm okay with that now. I'm just embracing it. Right, I think what I want to do with the other ones is I want like radiating. Um, like rays of the sun so I'm gonna we'll stick on there I'm gonna start with the middle and then I'm gonna work my way out to the sides obviously I didn't plan any of this I'm just making this up as I go along which I'm sure you're okay with It's funny because if I hadn't already decided on the cover for my Bohemian Journal, this would have been the cover for my Bohemian Journal. Because it's kind of just shouting that, is it not? Um, let's go in opposite direction here. I think that added something to it. I need to sort that out, don't I? I think I'm going to go around with. Do I have a thinner black than that? A, a wider black? That's just a bit too wide, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to have to do it in this one. Uh, and then I think I want to put some like fake stitching in some of this. Right, one thing that keeps drawing my attention is this here. I like it, but it's just, it needs something. And I think I want to come in and use this blue that I used here and I used here to actually do what I did with the white lines. So let me just do one and then I might decide to pause you if I like it, just so I can get it done. Okay, I think that will work. All right. Yeah, right, I'm going to pause you. So back again, I put the lines around this. I, I like the fact that that's now a little more robust. And also you may have noticed I've done stitching on the brown lines. Now I've left one so you can see what I did. I just took the fine marker and literally it was like putting the lines down the middle of a highway. There is one more thing I want to do, and I know I seem to be doing lots of dots and lines, but this feels like it needs dots and lines. So I'm going to bring in the 3mm, let's make sure it's loaded, 
and I want to come in around the edges of these petals and do dots. I'm holding my pen vertically and I do that because I'm more likely to get a round dot if I do it that way. If I come in at an angle I'm likely to get an oval dot. Well is it a dot? It's an oval. I think I'm going to do the same with this one. And I think then I might actually call it done. And I think I want to do it around this one as well. It's funny, all these dots are reminding me of Aboriginal art in Australia. I used to live in, I live in Australia for a little while. About four years of my life was spent in Sydney, Australia. I used to live in Elizabeth Bay. Right. I think let's do the same on this one and then the theme will carry to the corners of this. Right, I need to stop now because I'm really, really seriously getting carried away with this. But I paint. So, I'm Kerry the Crafter, that's C-E-R-I, the Crafter. Bye, guys.